Hey, Debbie, let me know when you can see me. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Christine. Hi, Janice. Shelly. Hi, Judy. <laughs> yes, Beth. I'm live. <laughs> it's a little strange. I'm all by myself, so I feel a little, a little lonely. <laughs> How are you guys today? Everybody doing good? I hope so. It got chilly here again last night. Not too bad. <laughs> uh, I guess most of the country would think it was pretty warm because it was only in the 40s. But we're Texans. We got thin blood. <laughs> That's cold to us. That's very cold to us. So I wasn't sure I was going to make it right at 3.30 because I was watching Misty and, and uh, Michael and Michelle. <laughs> they had some good stuff today. So I think they're finishing up. Michelle appeared to be very wiped out. She was tired. I don't think she slept last night. Oh, thanks, Beth. <laughs> uh, I don't have a whole bunch of choice, but... No, it feels good. I don't have to have the air conditioner running out here. It was chilly in here earlier, but now it feels pretty good. So I don't think it'll get any hotter. It's too late in the day. I've got my laptop right here in front of me. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm trying to um, make sure I'm keeping up with the chat properly. So where is everybody today? No, I don't mean like, where's everybody at? I mean like, <laughs> where are you guys at? What are y'all doing? Oh, thank you, Judy. It really does. I wish I could hear your voices. That would be, that would be excellent. That, that would be perfect. They need to come up with that. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm usually, and you can ask Beth and Tammy and everybody, I am usually, ah, yeah, I see you're, you're working. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Beth. Um, usually I, I'm, and they'll, my friends will tell you, I'm like a chatty Kathy. I just, uh, I chat all the time. And in a few minutes, I'll, I'll be chatty again. It's just trying to get everything all started up. You know, um, and it's always a question, okay, how long do I wait before I start? You know, I don't want to start too soon. I don't want to wait too long. I don't want to be boring. Thank you. Yes, everybody tap and uh, tap, tap, type in all caps and I can see it. I'm here, but I'm, well, see, why am I looking in there? I'm here, but I'm starting to get sleepy. Uh-oh, you might need a nap. And seeing if I had something where I could buzz you. Hi, Tammy. If I had something where I could buzz you, then um, it would wake you back up. I didn't know you were in Washington, Judy. That's a long way away. That is a really long way. My daughter was stationed in, in Washington when she was in the uh, Air Force. She was up there in Tacoma. And my chat wasn't working. You had to go out in the... Oh, well, welcome back, Debbie. <laughs> okay, so buzz you. <laughs> buzz you awake. I will. Um, your I see, uh, Tricia, your collective knowledge of um, live sales and things, um, I need to rely upon that you guys are going to have to help me out to you know 
hurry up, slow down, do this, do that. Feel free to, you know, tell me, okay, it's time to get started. Enough talking. Let's, let's go. That sort of thing. Okay. Or let's wrap it up, you know, <laughs> because I'll, I'll stop and I'll start reading like I'm, um, like I'm watching somebody else's show. I guess I amuse myself or something. Three Washington people. Company still on. They're they're almost done. Ah, uh, yeah. And if you're, are you talking about Michelle, because she was tired. She was she was tired, baby. She said she stayed up till like four o'clock in the morning. If I'd have known that, I'd have talked to her. I'm usually up to about four o'clock in the morning. Awesome. Uh, so good to see all of you here. I can't believe all you guys are here. Okay, so let me just uh, make a few announcements to let you know. Uh, I have an appointment tomorrow, so invoices will begin going out sometime tomorrow, maybe in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, um, and then on into Thursday, whatever, as I get everything wrapped up and weighed and sent off to you. So, what else? Oh, if you buy something and you email me. Now, here's a problem I think some people had from when I was in Tammy's sale. My email address, and I don't put it on the, I, I should have it scrolling across the bottom. And I didn't. I can fix that. I think. Hold on. Let me, let me poke you in the eye for a minute. Nope. Never mind. I messed it up. Mm, let's see. There it is. Okay. Let me see if it starts working. Nope. I just messed it up. That's all I did. I just messed it up. Um, I'm not going to touch it no more. Oh, there it is. Because huh? um, I'll mess it up worse. As, anyway, what I was saying was, if you look in my name, oh, that's where I meant, Debbie. See, I'm, I can sit in it. I've got an air conditioner if it gets too hot. But Gary's been having to work to pay the bills. I don't get it, but, you know, it happens. So, and what I was going to say was, if you look at my email address, you'll see at the beginning of it, there's an A. You have to email me at A Vintage Conversation. I feel like Whoever has vintage conversation for an email address probably got some emails last week and are wondering why. I'm surprised I, well, they don't know who to send it to. But they probably got some emails because <laughs> I know a couple people said, I sent it and I didn't get it. So I feel sure that that <clears throat> was what the problem was, was that they didn't put an A on it. So you got to put A vintage conversation. We will have a giveaway at the end this, this evening, this afternoon, whatever it is. I uh, will put everybody's numbers in my, my lucky Irish bag from the Blarney Woolen Mills in Ireland. It's Blarney Castle. Um, however many items you buy, that's how many, you know, numbers you'll have in the drawing. And my, see my, my, darn it. Oh, no, I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> my uh, um, chat is not scrolling on my, on my phone, so I'm going to have to look at my laptop. My laptop. Hi, Judy. I'm going to have to look at my laptop to read what you're saying. So I'm, I'm not trying to be rude. Anyway, back to the... Boy, ADHD today. Back to the giveaway. So however many items you buy, you'll have that many numbers in the drawing bag, and I will draw from it at the end. Today's giveaway is a ceramic pen. It is a sheep. Why are messages coming through on my phone? Oh, my gosh. Do not disturb. Hello. Anyway, it's a ceramic pen. He's a little sheep. 
but he's a little cutie. So I thought it was a good time of the year to have a little sheep pen. Oh, Judy, you better believe it, honey. If you've never been there, you, at Blarney Castle, they have the Blarney Stone. And you have to climb up this tiny little stone stairway up to the very top of the castle. Stand on the, I guess it's a parapet. Wait in line. When it's your turn, the Blarney Stone is not just sitting there. It's down in a hole. And that hole is open all the way to the ground below. I mean, probably about seven stories. Well, they've been nice enough to put some bars there. So if you fall, you just kind of hang and get stuck. But anyway, you sit down and you lay down on your back and you hold on to these bars behind you on the wall and you've been way over it, been upside down and kiss the Blarney Stone, which they do clean in between kisses. <laughs> but now they got these guys that sit there and hold on to your belt loops. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I have the gift of gab, apparently. But so does my mother-in-law, because she's done it, too. And my daughter. My sister wouldn't do it. But anyway, so you get the sheep. <laughs> Just not interrupt your feet. Oh, ah, but it gets in the middle of my screen, and I can't see what I'm doing. So I'll have to poke you in the eye every now and then and get rid of it. I am right about 219 subscribers. So I am working on my 250 mark. When I get to 250, I'll put out a video that will let you know that we're going to have a giveaway and I'll let you know what we're giving away and what to do to be a part of that giveaway. Maria Ladybug, you're here. What time is it there? Good grief. Maria Ladybug is in, Santa's still done it. Maria Ladybug, I believe is in, Sweden, is that correct? She, she, oh, she finds some pretty things there and she makes jewelry. She's very soft spoken and pleasant to watch. So, <laughs> all right. Okay. So, y'all ready to get started? We shall go. Okay. I have several things today. We have a little bit of everything planners. Tonala, right? Is that right, Debbie? Tonala? Um, bases, we've got trinket dishes, we've got linens, we've got a little bit of everything. So we'll get started slowly. We'll get started slowly. Now, if you watched one of my live hauls, you may have saw these guys, okay? We debated what are these strange little figures? And we finally decided they were eggplants. And then we decided that they had to be, you know, a hobbyist piece. Well, Martha finally looked on the bottom of the other one and not just the one. And it says Japan. So they're actually from Japan. Who knew? But they're just, they're just so ugly. They're cute. And I like the color, I must say. Do we have enough light? I hope so. Anyway, I like the color. And let's see, put this here. And do y'all need these? $5 for number 63? He's a little bit in the dark, isn't he? No, I can think on the screen he looks okay. Bye, Beth. She's gotta go back to work. Anyway, y'all give me let me know. Do you, do we do we need these or can I just tell you the number? What do y'all think? Since it's just me and not two people. I'll let you catch up. Do we need the number cards? Don't need the number cards. Who, I'm going to have to turn the air conditioner off. This is stressful. This is stressful. Okay. Ah, nice. You like the cards. Okay. All right, we'll do the cards. We'll do the cards. Okay, then. The next item that we are going to take a little look-see at is Blue Mountain Pottery. I found this when I was traveling up Debbie's way. 
It's a little blue mountain pottery owl. I love their glaze. I, I love that color blue that is in them. And the blue and the brown and, and you can see his little face. And I don't know, I like, and I've seen some other of their glazes, but I like this, this, this glaze. So he is $10, number 60 for the Blue Mountain Pottery Owl. $10, number 60, if you're interested in the little owl. Okie dokie, Miss Janice Stevens. I see you would like the owl. Let me write your name down here, ma'am. I'm a one woman show, so, and we'll put your number in the bag. When Tammy was with me, I could do all this stuff while she was talking. All right, let's see. Next, something else that we looked at on a live haul is this Norcrest kitty cat. Now, we looked at him and we debated much about this little fella. He's got a hand-painted sticker on his little hiney. And he does say Norcrest with his little sticker there, Japan. But he's got all this crazing on him. And so we decided that it was intentional crazing. And I looked at him with the loop. And it is intentional crazing. But inside every one of these little crazing places, there's actual crazing. So definitely he's vintage. He's just designed to look more crazy than he really is. Anyway, which way? This way. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, he is $8, and he's number 99. If you like the Norcrest Kitty, and you would like to have him. $8, number 99. Okay. I don't even remember what I did. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's very good, very good. <laughs> Okie dokie. Next up, is this too fast? Is this just right, fast enough, whatever? Yes? Okay. We'll go with this, and somebody holler at me in caps if I need to speed up or slow down. All right, then. We have something for Easter. A little... Um, a little trinket dish. Might be a little lovely something to give as a gift in somebody's Easter basket. It is egg shaped. Has these pretty little spring flowers and the gold trim along the lid. It's in great condition. And once again, as I said before, you can assume everything is fine unless I point something out. So, and yes, I ship from Texas. Thank you, Beth. There is a nice gold trim all the way around the lid. No chips, no cracks, and it is a Japan piece. I think that's right side up. I can barely read it. Maybe you can. <laughs> but just a nice little ceramic glazed trinket dish and make a lovely Easter gift. And it is $5, number 70, for the Easter egg trinket dish. <laughs> They're so hard to hold. <laughs> anyway, $5, number 70 for the Easter egg trinket dish. Let's see, do you need, no, you do not have to pre-register. I mean, if you, if that's something that you want to do, you can do it. And then I'll have you, you know, in my list and I will, you know, email you back and let you know I've got your information and so you won't have to worry about it the next time. But it's not something you have to do. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate your help. I appreciate your help. Oh. 
Sorry, sometimes I read the chat and it just makes me giggle. All right, I have some doilies today. These have not been starched, but they have been blocked, which means I um, have pressed them, steamed them, so that they, you know, fill out to their, their natural size and, and look straight and that sort of thing. It's three pieces. It would be beautiful for a console set. Let me see if I can get these. They look sort of like lacy butterflies. These are the two smaller ones. And he is, it is very much like lacy butterflies. The two small ones, like I said, that would be great for your console set. Now, and if I don't recognize you verbally that, that you have purchased something, make sure you remind me because I, I might not have seen it for some reason. So there's two of these, two of the lacy ones, and that that is very intricate for me. I find this to be very intricate. Those two, and then the, and these two are, what size are they? They are 14 by 8, and then the large one is 20 by 12. It's a rectangle, but it still carries that same, if you look in the, there's six of those same like circular lacy patterns. Now, do you see right here in the very middle, it's, look, I'm looking at you right through it. The stitching came loose right there. That is what's wrong with this one. It can be darned back in place. I did not do it because I did not want to make a repair on the item that I was going to try to sell to you. So there are three of these, as I said, great console piece that can also be used on your chair as the headrest and the arm pieces um, to protect the arms. And, oh my goodness, my, my prayer group is having a prayer and so I'm getting so many, so many prayer notices. It is $12, number 56, for the three pieces, the three doilies, the matching set. And they, yeah, they definitely do go together. They are a matched set. They only have that one little place that just needs a, a couple of stitches to, to put it back together. Okay, let's see. I have an advertising piece that when I found it, I just laughed. It was so funny. Do any of you buy cards or collect cards? Because I have a double set of Johnson Raid <laughs> cards. Raid kills bugs dead, apparently, is what it says. It's got a cool graphics on the box of all the little bugs. Now, the cards have the same graphic, but you got to see this joker and this, and look at that joker. <laughs> is that a, a green olive at his feet? So the joker is so cool, and all of the, the face cards, whoops, there I go, dropping stuff. All of the face cards are... Are bugs. <laughs> they are just so funny. So as far as advertising pieces go, I found these rather, rather good, you know. And as far as cards, can you imagine if I put my, uh, my business stickers on these and use them as business cards? <laughs> oh my goodness. People would get, uh, they would be shocked by that. So, <clears throat> the raid cards, and there are, there are two packs in here. The raid cards are $8, and they're number 91. 
You want to play a game of, uh, I don't know. You know what? You could play war with these or slapjacks and it'd be like killing bugs. It'd be good for the kids. They'd think that is hilarious. Um, I don't blame them. <laughs> it was hard for me not to take them out and play with them. I liked them. They were darling. All righty, let's see. Oh, I have another linen here for you. It's a pillowcase. It's not a big um, bed pillowcase. It is a decorative pillowcase. It's a, I think it's, let me see, is it, hold on, I don't want to lie to you. But I don't joke about, do you want me to lie to you or tell you the truth? 14 inch square. Oh, Sandra, you would like the cards, number 91? Okay. Let me put your little number in the bag and write down your name. I know, I gotta think of something just witty to be saying while I write, but I'm, I'm liable to mess up your names if I do that. Okay, anyway, decorative pillowcase. It is a vintage, and she's she's very much like a sunbonnet Sue. She's picking flowers. And the material that it is on has like a, um, almost like a shadow stripe in it. See that? And it's all handmade, all of the edges have been hand sewn. The back is a solid. Let me show you the opening. So here's the opening. And you can see where it's been sewn there too. So it's, it's all handmade. It's a uh, heavier cotton somewhere in between a um, vintage handkerchief and um, a starched pillowcase. But I think it's because this, this case has some, some um, the decorative shadow lines in it. It's got some large ones and some small ones. But I thought it would be very cute on um, a little girl's bed or just in a little girl's room, a baby's room. You could frame it and use it as a hanging, whatever, you know, if you buy it, it'll be yours, whatever you want to do with it. So she is number 50 and she is $9 for the Sunbonnet Sue pillowcase. She is a nice square and she might make somebody very happy. Alrighty, then let's see. Oh, I heard something. You know, uh, when I'm out here, we don't have any insulation in, in the, the walls up yet. So I can hear things outside. A few days ago, there were some cats outside making some questionable noises. So I'm worried in a few weeks, we're gonna have a bunch of kitties running around out there. There's, there's absolutely no telling whatsoever. Oh, I wish Katie was here so that she could give me some um, advice on this. Oops, tell me. Ooh, that sounded loud, I bet. <laughs> I found a brass Coke bottle vase. I guess it's a vase. Maybe it's just a decorative item. I don't know. Would you put water in, in brass? But it's a, it's brass. <laughs> It says Coca-Cola, registered trademark. I thought it was very unique. I haven't seen one. That's why I was, you know, I thought, well, if Katie was here, she can tell me, yeah, I got three of them, or, oh, no, I've never seen that. Or, but, yeah, it's different. It's heavy. It's cold. <laughs> it's very cold. Yes, it is. It's a... Uh, 
it's, it's, yeah, it's a fancy Coke. And it's just the size of the little ones that uh, I remember getting when I was a little girl out of the, the Coke machines, this little size. Nice little brass Coke. The caffeine free, I have not tried that. I drink um, Sprite Zero, which is caffeine free. Anyway, this guy is, how big is he? He's seven inches tall. I go like this and then not say, but he's, he's seven inches tall. It's nice and shiny, but hasn't been polished. So that's just him. Anyway, if you're interested in the brass Coke bottle for you or a loved one who has everything but a brass Coke bottle, it's $10, number 85. $10, number 85 for the brass Coke bottle that I have not seen before. So, definitely different. Definitely different. Let's see, anybody in new that I have not said hello to? Amy, hello Amy, how are you? I'm glad you could join in today. Ah, oh, let's see, let's see. Okay, next thing, next thing. Oh, I have to be careful with this one because it's musical. <laughs> and I don't want to play too much music. I'm glad to hear that, Amy. All right, this is a vintage Anesco Swan. He is, she is, it is bisque. It's in lovely condition. All of its little flowers, they're all just right where they're supposed to be, doing what they're supposed to do. It is a music box. And it plays Swan Lake. <laughs> and I don't want it to play too long, so I have to be careful how much I wind it. Oh no. And so I'll kind of talk over it a little bit so that it doesn't play too long, so I don't get in trouble for playing Tchaikovsky on my live sale. But it's white, it's got pink ribbons, pink and blue flowers, its little face is intact, the flowers are intact. It is, how big is this guy? Six inches by four inches. So he's a good little size and he is $15, number 59 for the Inesco Vintage Music Box. Yeah, he's a music box. <gasps> I don't know, he just cracks me up. I like his, his orange and black face. When I look at him, he just cracks me up. <laughs> but seriously, if I wind him just one click too long, he just plays and plays and plays. And I don't know, I'd have to stick a stick in him or something to make him be quiet. Oh, that sounded bad. I meant his little twisty thing, you know, so it wouldn't spin. That just sounded bad. I'm trying to look and see how bad is my, no, that's not bad. Excuse me, I must have a drink. I'll be glad when I get into all this witty repartee and I can just banter, banter, banter in between all of the sales. Ooh, it's Nate. Ladies, Nate is in the building. Let us all say hello to Nate. Oh no, Kathy, you didn't almost miss it. We haven't been going that long. Well, I've just been talking a lot. I better get my butt in here because I got a bunch of crap laid out here. So, let's go. Okay. Oh my.
my work. This fella is heavy. Let me see, where is his, his little deal? Okay, he's right here. All right. This is going to be, in Tammy's words, a Texas throwdown. Now, if you were not at Tammy's sale last week, you are not aware of the new phrase that has been coined for the Texas dealers when they do their offer-ups, wars, whatever. We call it a Texas throwdown, as you will see here and tomorrow night when Tammy at Vintage Uprising Texas has her sale. So, we are going to do a Texas throwdown on this guy. He is the Tunnel of Cat. He is a little different than the ones you've seen before, maybe. He is a sandstone cat with the painting. Got the painted tail, the flowers on his back, on his head. He's got great facial features. The collar, his little arms. And he is signed Mexico and by the artist, the initials M.O., which I think is Manuel um, Olivero. I think that's who it may be because I, I found a list of known artists and he was one that signed his M.O. So he is signed He's definitely substantial. He's not, he's not hollowed out. He's pretty weighty. Here, I'll give you a look at the signature and his little face. So we are going to do a throwdown with this guy, and he is going to start at $12 if anybody is interested in my tunnel of cat. He is six inches by five inches. Yes, he is. He's very nice. He is a, a larger piece. It, they make some, some uh, owls that look a little similar to him. I'm not sure about him being sandstone. I see Janice has opened the, 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 the throw down at 12. And like I said, he is a sandstone as opposed to an all over glaze. So he has a different feel and look than a lot of the tunnel that you will see. I have a piece that has a gray um, glaze on it and I have this one that's the sandstone and then other than that, it's always been the, 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 the white glaze with the flowers on it. And this one has some lovely flowers and what looks like a, a fern leaf on his back. And it is the thick raised paint there. I see um, Debbie Vital at 21. So 21 is your number. And his collar is just the, the uh, regular layer of paint. He's the white on him is that thicker, that bulbous, type of, of paint. I, I, it's, there's a word for it, Debbie. I don't, I don't know what the word is where, where it's thicker and more built up than just a regular paint. The only thing that I have found on him, searching him with a magnifying glass, is he looks like he may have a mark on one eye when I look at him with a magnifying glass. But when I'm just looking at him, I don't see it. So, he's got nice definition in his little arms sticking out. Good shape, good ears. When I first thought got him, I thought um, they found rocks <laughs> that looked similar. And they went, ooh, that looks like a cat. Let's paint that. But I don't think that's the case. I think they actually kind of carve it. So... <laughs> Uh, no, Janice, no take backs. <laughs> so we've got Janice at, at uh, 24, unless you're dyslexic. So. 
but yeah, little whiskers. I mean, he's not, I mean, he, he's really looking at you, but he doesn't look scared. Well, maybe he looks like you just took off your clothes or something, but you know, that could go either way. Okay, so if that's about it, then I am going to say any more bids, um, going, 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 and Janice Stevens for $24. Thank you, ma'am. Let me write you down here before I accidentally give you something else and give somebody yours. And we'll put your number in the bag. See who wins. Okay. Oh, man. I knew I did that wrong. Oh, oh well. We'll figure that out in a minute. We'll figure that out in a minute. Okay. I have a vanity jar. I found it over in Beth's neck of the woods at Bohemian Rhapsody. Upon research, I am beginning to believe this may even be Victorian because there were a couple of others um, attributed as Victorian that looked like this. They were white. It is a blue milk glass, glass <laughs> vanity jar. As you can see, it's got a relief detail all the way around the bottom. It's got a little foot that also features the relief detail. There are no markings on the bottom other than it's got a number one. There is a number one right there, and that's the only markings. The top of the jar also has the relief details around the edge. Inside the jar at the very bottom has a slight discoloration. I don't know if perhaps it came with a cosmetic in it at some point, a powder or even a cream. I don't know. I find it very lovely. This color is intriguing. It's I'm, I'm looking at the colors that I'm seeing. It's different on my phone. It's different on my computer. It is a beautiful blue milk glass. It does have a flaw. Right here, under the edge of the lid, there is a chip. See that? Not visible. on it or above it, but it is there. See, is that it? I'm trying to see if that's it. Maybe a little tiny one here. But if it is Victorian as the other, um, you know, References that I found say it is. Oh, thank you, Nate. Oh, I am so, I'm going to blush. Nate likes my, my fingernails. <laughs> if you <laughs> imagine that it could be a Victorian piece, the age of this darn thing, it's a wonder it doesn't have more problems than what it does. So anyway, I'm going to ask $12 for the milk glass vanity jar and it's number 87. $12 number 87 for the beautiful blue milk glass vanity jar. If anyone has an interest just let me know and this bad boy will be yours. I have a complete mini nativity. Ooh the nativity! Oh, I've seen those. Those are pretty. I saw a lady once who, she said back in the 70s, <laughs> back in the 70s when she got married. Now, see, I just got a call too. That's weird. Who's calling us all? 
Back in the 70s when she got married, they went to Mexico on their honeymoon. And she said as a wedding gift to her, her husband bought her a complete set of the Tonala uh, dishware. All the plates. I see Sandra for the milk glass vanity jar. Let me write you down, Sandra. Do not want to miss you. Anyway, for her wedding present, her husband bought her this complete set and she was showing it. And I mean, she had all, all the plates, all the bowls, all the salad plates, the bread plates, the serving dishes, the platters, the serving bowls. She had, she had so much. It was beautiful, beautiful. I was a little jelly, I have to say. And the fact that it was really some vintage stuff, that, that just added to it, so. All right, I found this when I was up near, or was in Colorado, when I went up on a vacation. Somebody here knows about that. It's a, and this is my first piece. This is Namaji pottery. And I just put you a little succulent to show you what uh, the different color succulent might highlight these beautiful colors in this piece. So this little vase is about three and a half inches by three inches. It's got a very classic shape. It has multi-colored glaze on it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, look at that. Look at that glaze. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This is not Southwest Pottery. It's Southwest Style Pottery. I thought it was Southwest Pottery. <laughs> yes, Debbie knows about that trip. I thought it was Southwest Pottery, but it's made up in Michigan or Wisconsin or someplace like that. And for years, a lot of people touted it as being Southwest Pottery, but it is not. But it is Namaji. I didn't even know how to spell that until I found one. But it's my first piece. And I almost kept it because it is my first piece, but it's not really what I collect. and. While I find it beautiful, it doesn't meld with my other collections that I will be displaying here in my studio. So, Namaji, gotta go. Someone please take it, <laughs> or I'll start a Namaji collection. This Namaji piece is $10, and it's number 97. The, yes, the colors do look like a sunrise or a sunset depending upon how you look at it. And as you can see, it does look good with the succulent in it. Especially if you, if you are, you know, selective about what color succulent you put in it. With a red in it, it really highlights it. So. And it's almost got a genie bottle shape, but it's very classic. Very classic looking shape. Anyway, if anybody decides they want it, that's number 97 for $10. And let's see, I'm trying to keep a little eye on my list here, see where I'm going. How about, where is it? Where'd you go, fella? Oh, there you are. Oh, let me bring this guy over here. He's a little happy, but he's a little sweet. This is a trinket dish. I had to use my loop on the back of this one to see what it said because of, and I, well, I'll just show you. This is an alabaster trinket dish. As you can see, it's a larger piece with the floral design on the top. Beautiful spring yellow. And it it just, it looks vintage. The, the color when I'm looking at it, 
reminds me of the, the old celluloid pieces. It just, it falls in that color. Now, it's got the paper remnants of an old tag here. That is not what gave me the problem. What gave me the problem is, I'm not even sure I have it up the right way. Let me see. Oh, it's not like you're going to be able to see it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> In this little circle here, this little oval, there was writing. So I had to get my loop out. And it says, Alabaster Stone, Handmade Italy. So it's Italian. Who knew? Now, I tried to look these up. But in my research, all the ones I found were smaller, and they were hinged. And this is not hinged. This is a full two-piece piece of alabaster, um, hand-carved. It's in excellent condition. Now, stone, as you know, can often be chipped, putting the lid on them and stuff. But... It's, it's great, and it is just the most beautiful yellow with all this, this marbling in it. It is so gorgeous, and I was so happy that it was not one of the hinged ones, that it's bigger. So, somewhere in Italy, there was some, some beautiful Bella Donna or whatever, you know, that using her powder puff out of her vanity jar and the big fluffy powder puffs and putting it all over smelling good and going out and saying, chow baby you know getting pinched on her way to church that sort of thing but <sighs> it's lovely oh sorry we're gonna do a throw down on this should have already told you this I'm sorry I get so involved in this piece because I, I, I like it we're gonna start this at $12 Sorry, guys. <laughs> I love this piece. It is so pretty. I, I get caught up in it. I get caught up in it. But it's the two-piece alabaster. And, oh, listen. It's just, it's just got that heavy seating on it. And it's so soft. It's so soft. I love it. Yes, Tammy, Texas Throwdown. Except I think I already won because today I have no people to play Throwdown with me. <laughs> but that's okay. It doesn't matter because she can live with me until she finds her forever home. And I am not offended by that prospect. So. I don't buy everything I see. So who can expect other people to buy everything they see? Nobody. That would be, that'd be unrealistic. Very unrealistic. Oh. <laughs> Do you ever get so used to using your phone that you touch your uh, laptop? Screen and try to do things with your finger. Oh my gosh. I do that all the time. It drives me nuts that I, I do it. Oh, let me reach very far over here. I have a lovely carved piece. 1984 from Farmington, Missouri. Um, someone by the name of W. Haynes carved this beautiful shorebird. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. <laughs> anyway, he is, I'm not sure of the wood. It's a beautiful sort of a reddish wood. He's got little eyes. Beautiful, delicate little legs. He's not an over-carved piece. He is a simple carved piece. Standing on, I don't know, maybe the top of a pier, you can just see his little feet. 
on the edges. I have a couple of, of, of wood carving pieces like this. The ones I got had come back from Jamaica, so. But this, this takes some skill. It's not something I can do. I can't whittle, if you know what whittling is. I can't whittle a, spoken, poke, a stick to poke with, a sharp stick. I don't make my own marshmallow sticks, okay, for roasting marshmallows. I make my husband do it because I can't do it. And it was terrible when it was Girl Scout time and I was trying to teach them how to use and handle their pocket knives. It was, it was pathetic. The Carved Shorebird is $12. It's number 54. If you have a bird collection, a shorebird collection, maybe something that you would like to add. Can you see him? Yeah. That may be something that you might like to add to your collection. If so, let me know. Number 54, $12. For the signed shorebird by Mr. or Ms. Haynes, whoever she may be. Oh, you guys, you got to do me a favor. When I start, when I'm doing hauls, Please, 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 in the comments, let me know if you see something in the hall that you would like to see included in a live sale. Now, when I ever get this room filled and all my stuff's on the shelves, I can pull a Misty and I can just go around and y'all can tell me what you want me to, to sell. But until then, and it, you know, I'm going to need some help and would really appreciate it. All right, Swanky Swigs. Well, Swanky Swig, because... I only have one, but she was, she was, she is cute. Bye, Maria. Thank you for coming. You have a good night. I know it's late there. This is a tiny, tiny little swig. Let me see where I can get you. Things. It is the, what is the name of this collection? The... Bustling Betty. It's a 1953 craft cheese spread, probably. <clears throat> Excuse me. Try not to sneeze. Bustling Betty, bringing in tea to feed her family. It's hard to see. Let me put the card inside of it. Maybe that will help. Yeah, that helps a little. Don't turn it too far. See, there she is. She's in really good shape. Nobody put this little lady through the uh, dishwasher. She's a wonderful little swig. A swanky swig. They do um, have them in multiple colors. I've seen her in red and blue. I have a green, <laughs> which is good for me because green is my favorite color. So, I am asking $5 for my little bustling Betty, my craft 1953 swanky swig. If you are a collector, here's your opportunity to collect one in excellent shape. Number 93, $5. Let me know. Oh, drink time. Did anybody bring snacks? Would be good. Snacks would be good. All right. Let's see. Does anybody collect Holly Hobby? I have never in all my time of picking up stuff, picked up Holly Hobby until I went on this trip. And in Arizona, they must do Holly Hobby a lot. Oh, bye Kathy, thank you for coming. 
I've never found any before, but in Arizona, they apparently like Holly Hobby. So I found this Holly Hobby um, plaque. It's a ceramic plaque. It's glazed on the front. I've seen some others. They seem to be kind of faded out. I don't know if they were in the sun a lot because they're, the yellow is not as vibrant on the other ones that I've seen. But she says, to the house of a friend, the way is never long. And that's true. It didn't seem like it took that long to get up to Colorado to see Debbie. <laughs> so someone has attached a, and it's a very secure, let me tell you, attachment on the back of this thing to hang it up. Now, she is Japan, although her sticker is gone, but she was made in Japan. And if she didn't have an original hanger on it, I have no idea what they did with it. But, it, you know, it's the, the 70s, so I don't know what they did with it. But she is $5, and she's number 66 for the Holly Hobby plaque wall hanging. I think she would look lovely in your kitchen. She would also be a good space filler amongst the little um, items that, you, you know, that we hang up on our walls, the little pictures and the little, the, oh, so somebody's got hot fries? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Somebody brought snacks. Hot fries? Wait, wait. Did you bring enough for everybody? Nate, yours are going to be cold by the time they get there. So anyway, number 66, Janice Stevens. Thank you, Janice. You like Holly Hobby? I know when I was a little girl, Holly Hobby was, was very, ah, oh, Tam Tam brought snacks. Um, Holly Hobby was very popular, but I never had Holly Hobby. That's not, we, my mother never bought me Holly Hobby. I probably would have loved having Hobby, Holly Hobby, but mom just didn't. She just didn't. Okay, so let's see. Right here, we're going to put down Miss Janice's name. And your number is in the bag, Janice, for... Janice has got three in the back. She's 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 gonna have a good chance at winning. All right. I collected a um, sugar bowl in this pattern. Oh, hot fry chips. Ha <laughs> Oh, what are hot fries? They're they're like um, it, they look like a French fry but they're like a potato chip. They're usually about as big around as my little finger. You know, it's kind of like a shoestring potato on steroids, if you know what those are. And they're spicy. So, my daughter loves Holly Hobby. Her room was decorated with Holly. Aww, I have a Holly Hobby teapot in my stuff. This is a Linux Butterfly Gardens trinket dish. It's the Louise Lalure, I believe is that how you pronounce her, the lady's name. I had one of her sugar bowls that I was going to sell, and then I found a hairline crack in the, the little finial top, and so I just, you know, Vinny says anything that doesn't sell, you're supposed to just take and smash on the floor. <laughs> That's what he said he was going to do. So anyway, I, this... I, I saw this and I just thought this was really pretty. I could take my rings off and put it in. I could use it as a fancy soap dish. I could put my sponge on it in the kitchen. I'd be high style. Originally, it was purchased at Heritage Cards and Gifts for $13.95. Whatever that was. But I never take off these old stickers because sometimes they date them, you know. They look good. I like them. So anyway, this Linux, Linux Butterfly Garden Trinket Dish is $10, and it's number 51. $10, number 51 for the Linux Mount Butterfly Garden, Butterfly Meadow by Louise Lalure. 
and there are a lot of peaches. Oh, okay. Bye, Debbie. Tell Rod I said hello. Gary says hello. It's good to talk to you and visit with you, and I'll see you on Thursday. A lot of pieces. There's a lot of pieces that you can get. They have one that looks like a, a butterfly even. I couldn't find the heart one. I couldn't find it. Only the um, butterfly ones. So I don't know if they didn't make as many or they were super popular. Nobody gets rid of them. You know, it's just one of those things. You just never know. Thank you, Debbie. Hey, Steve. Did you have to plow today? Every four hours? <gasps> yeah, see? We'll wait, Nate. You go ahead. Go get some. Hope he brings enough for everybody. We could all use some Aussie snacks, couldn't we? Yeah, poor Steve. He, he gets a little cranky when he has to plow that big piece of property of his every four hours or shovel his way out his door. And he's got a pretty place, a lot of gorgeous stuff. So, okay. Another Easter piece. It was Nancy from this overstuffed house. Has anybody heard from Nancy today? Did she hear from any of the uh, the service texts about maybe coming out and looking at her, her heater and see what they were going to do? And she was pretty cold last night. So I know they're supposed to be calling her, so I hope they call her soon. Everybody take a moment and, and think warm thoughts for Nancy because her heater broke and... and it's cold up there where she's at. So anyway, the next piece we have is a George Good rabbit. He is a ceramic. It looks like an Easter rabbit to me without the eggs, but, you know. Looks 80s. It's got all the... Um, the ribbon roses and the ribbon detail. We did a lot of this back then. We used a lot of this pink, this beautiful pink that's in his ears. Got a cotton tail, albeit ceramic, but it's got a nice glaze to him. And I can see him becoming a traditional piece of your Easter decor. Good eyes. It's not, it's not intimidating. You know, I've seen some of those rabbits and they can be scary and you don't want to scare the kids while you're decorating. You want your grandkids to want to come over and you want your kids to want to inherit the poor thing. So, let's see. Oops, that is not yours. This is yours. Oh, the behind-the-scenes details, I tell you. Those of you that have done it absolutely know what I'm talking about. Oh, no. Katie, I'm very sorry. I wish I could reflect my, the depth of my sorrow for you. It, but, you know, doing this doesn't. This, it does, it's not conducive. It's not conducive, but please know that you do have my sympathy. You truly do. And I hope we can distract you. I hope we can distract you in some little bit. Anyway, this George Good ceramic figure, beautiful piece, is $12, number 74. $12, number 74, if you would like to have this George Good piece become part of your traditional Easter decor. Sit here, mister. Sit right there, mister. While I move you around. 
Okay. Ah. Uh, if you are on Instagram and you follow me on there and you happen to be on when I posted it, I bought a couple of lots of elephants at an auction. And there were some good elephants in there. Oh, my word. There were some good elephants in there. So today I thought I would include one for you because he is a nod to St. Patrick's Day. He is just so cute. If I wasn't careful, I would be an elephant collector because there were so many pieces on there that, that even my husband came out in the studio and said, show me, show me. And I had to unwrap like 50 some odd pieces of, of elephants to show them to him. That's, he's not like that. That's, that's not what he usually does. But look at this little cutie. Oh my goodness. See, he's got clovers. So he is kind of a Irish St. Patrick's Day elephant. Look at, and look at those ears. Oh, his mouth is open. He's so happy. Look, even the end of his trunk is pink. Ah, <laughs> uh, I look now. Someone has has already put green felt on his little tushy so that he, you know, can sit nicely on your shelf. Now, this is what got me about this elephant, okay? His back is flat, and he's got a hole in the back of his head. Do you suppose he can be hung on the wall? Now, see, Christine, I read about the elephants. I researched it because I thought, now, why do I find elephants with their trunks down? If trunks up is what's good luck, were you trying to sell me bad luck? I found out it depends on where they are made, which country they come from. Because in some cultures, trunk up is good luck, and some cultures, trunk down is good luck. So, if you like a trunk up, this guy's got it. This guy is $12, and he is number 64 for the ceramic elephant, the vintage elephant with the clovers and the painted fingernails and the open mouth with the big pink tongue. Oh, he's so, he's so sweet. He's such a sweet baby. I like him. Yes, you know, and Southeast Asia has theirs, and then other, just, it just depends on where it comes from. And I was very surprised by that. It was not something that I knew. I had no idea. Except I couldn't imagine why they would be trying to sell me bad luck. You know, why are you selling me trunk down elephants if that's bad luck? So I don't know. I do not know. Okay, let's see. What do we got now? We have... Oh, I know what I want to show you guys. Let me see. Yeah, this one. Do you like vintage aprons? Do you like vintage aprons? I like vintage aprons. I have, well, I don't have tons of vintage aprons. I probably have eight or ten of them. But I, I, I buy them. I buy them. And I especially like a hostess apron. And a hostess apron were the sheer aprons. Because when you were having a dinner party, 
You didn't want to cover up your beautiful gown. You weren't actually cooking by that point, okay? You were hostessing. But, you know, you had to look like you were cooking, especially if you had a maid or some other help. This is a flocked vintage hostess apron. All of the white that you see around what looks like uh, lilies, these little bells, they're all flocked. The, the soft, fuzzy white. It's, oh, look at that. That is the most beautiful spring apron. Gosh, I hope you're seeing it so much better than I see it on my laptop because it looks washed out on my laptop and on my phone. It's got the most beautiful cornflower blue vivid flowers there is. It has a pocket on the right hand side just so that the hostess could stand there and put her hand in her pocket and just look all posh. It is 14 inches long and it is 14 inches wide from side to side. And then of course, the uh, apron strings, which aren't really stringy. It has, and let me see if I can find it. I have to back it up so you can, where is it? Come on. Okay. Right. See, it is so faint. It's so hard to, to picture it. In these two little spots right here, there's two tiny little brown spots. I think she dripped coffee when she was serving coffee after dinner. It's just, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. And it's $16, number 79. It's so lovely. I don't remember my mother wearing a hostess apron. I don't think we ever had that kind of party when I was little. Maybe by the time I came around, I was kid number four. Yeah. My parents didn't have enough money to have a party with a fancy apron. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? My mom didn't have any money until, until after my dad passed away and she put herself through nursing school. Once she started making money from being an RN, she had money. She bought her own self a house and she bought herself new cars. And she went on trips and vacations and loved my daddy to death, but dang, mister, couldn't you, you know, got a hostess apron or something for mama? <laughs> that would have been nice. My recipe book. Where's my recipe book? Oh, here it is. This, I have a recipe book. <laughs> It is very different than, than, than um, most of the recipe books I have seen because this is a my favorite recipes and you get to make your own recipe. Early 80s, the old spiral bound, plastic spiral bound book. The concept behind this was it was a place for you to record your own recipes. They gave you some examples over here of how to do it. And then on the opposite sides was where you would write in your own recipes or you would, you know, cut them out, tape them on, glue them on, whatever you wanted to do. And it has the sections for the appetizers and salads and all the pictures are in black and white. There are no color photographs. Hi Joanne, thank you for joining. Oh, it was nice and blue on yours, Janice. That's good. I'm glad it did translate. Desserts, breads, casseroles. In the back, 
there is a large section of charts, conversions, food terms, you know, so if you're not um, up on all the terms, we just of a certain type of recipe. And, and like I said, what I found very handy was equivalent charts for, you know, pints and quarts and teaspoons and, you know, oh, what if my eggs are small and I really, I've only got large eggs or what if it calls for, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's a good book. It's in great condition. I think one, this one front page here has a little crease on it right there. And that's all. So, so this recipe book is eight dollars, number sixty-two. Eight dollars, number sixty-two. If you would like to keep and record your own recipes, could be a really good gift for the baker or the cook in your family. You know, you could get Grandma to record a bunch of her recipes. You could get your sister, your aunt, all that. You could get them to record recipes in it. And then it would be a great gift to give to um, a family member getting married or someone graduating from college is gonna set up their own home, their own household. They would have all these recipes from, you know, your family that they could keep for theirs to start out their life with. It'd be a great keepsake. It would be a really great keepsake for somebody. Capa de Monte. I don't usually find Capa de Monte, and I don't usually find Capa de Monte flowers, but I did, I found one. And it was kind of intriguing to me because, like I said, I've never, I think I've seen a couple in glass cases at antique stores, but I've never, I've never seen one up close. Let's make sure I have the right matching card for this. That's my fear that I will give you a number that does not even go. <laughs> This is Napoleon, Italy, and it is a yellow rose, Capa de Monte. And it's really pretty. I was surprised by how pretty it was in person. You know, I'll look, I keep thinking I got this, there's more leaves and it's my fingernails. I was really surprised. But she has all of her petals, all of her edges are in great shape. She's a fairly good size, too. She is one, almost two inches tall and almost four inches wide. So for a little Capo de Monte flower, she is substantial. A nice porcelain and Italian a porcelain, too, which wouldn't be what makes it a true Capa de Monte, correct? And not a Capa de Monte wannabe. $9, number 57 for the Capa de Monte rose. Yeah, it is a miracle. It is a miracle because I've never found any Capa de Monte that was not just brutalized or wasn't in a glass case where I couldn't see it or touch it, which is probably why it still had all of its petals. <laughs> that is probably why. Not, not because of me touching it, just because of other people. You know what I'm talking about. You didn't think I was going to break it. Oh. My son, somebody's mowing their yard somewhere. I know they are. Because my allergies are starting to get me. My allergies are terrible today. Well, they weren't earlier, they, but they are now. All right, let's see. What are we going to look at next? Oh, a teapot. A teapot. 
I don't know if you'll be interested in a teapot. Let's find out. I'm learning. I'm learning. Getting to know you. You're getting to know me. Isn't it happy? It's so happy. Japan, Japan. it's Norlene's. Norlene's Japan. There you go. That's one of the happiest teapots I've ever seen. It has the gilding on the handle. It has the gilding on the lid, around the lid, on the spout. Oh, right there, on the spout. <laughs> She's a happy teapot. This is such a pretty green. This just screams spring, St. Patrick's Day. Ah. There, I mean, it's it's ready for tea. Oh my goodness, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is that? There is a there's an image in there. <laughs> I have not held it up to the light. I don't know what that is. I don't look, I don't know, can you can you guys see that in there? See that? I did not know that was in there. I am so surprised. I wish I knew what that was. What is that? That's going to drive me nuts. Is that a tree? Maybe it's a tree. I can't tell, but there's an image in the bottom of the teapot. It's not, let me see. Is it raised? It's a raised image in the bottom of the teapot. And I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe it is clouds. I don't know. I can't tell. Looks almost like a mushroom. <laughs> and I'm not on mushrooms. Okay. Look, do you see that down in there? When you hold it up to the light, you can see that it, it's an outlined image of some sort. I don't know what it is. Okay. You guys will get to choose what it is yourself. Maybe it's a flower. I don't know. Maybe it's kind of like reading tea leaves and it's all in the eye of the beholder. So we have a Norlene's Daisy teapot. I know they made a, a, a range of, of flower teapots, tulips. I uh, can't remember what else. Daisies. It has something in the bottom of it. It's amazing, whatever it is. It's $12, number 81. And if you buy this teapot, you will be able to explore the mystery of what is in the teapot and decide for yourself. Maybe it's lucky. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This happens to me sometimes, I just, like when I discovered the football players were actually salt and pepper players, salt and pepper shakers. I thought they were just figurines. So, if you buy the teapot and you figure out what's in there, will you please come back and let the rest of us know what it was? Because I'm willing to bet the other ones have something in them too. Oh my goodness, that's so exciting. <sighs> I did not know that. I've seen cups with stuff in them. I didn't know teapots ever had stuff in them. I did not know teapots had stuff in them. Okie dokie. Oh, Joanne, you would like it? Okay. Will you let us know what's in the bottom of it, please? When you make a decision yourself? Joanne, precious lavender buttons. All right. Ah, that was exciting. I know, snacks, snacks, snacks. Should have brought me something. I'll have a drink. 
You know, we should do this late at night and we can all drink. That would be fun. Well, Nate, what time is it there for you, Nate? Could you drink yet? I have an owl succulent planter. Isn't he cute? There you go, Tammy. He's cute. <laughs> no, he's a great little, um, he's an unglazed succulent. Let me take his little hat out of him. Got the uh, feather details on the front, the big owl eyes. The little nose and eyes are a, a, a painted glaze. Got a hole in his bottom. So you can actually put something in him. You know, something that alive, living, that you want to grow in him. I know, he is, he's very cute. He's very cute. I think he's precious. He is $5, number 53, for the owl succulent planter. If you would like to have him, sit on your windowsill and give you a little hoot every now and then. He can be yours. Them big old owl eyes. Maybe he'll whisper all the secrets of the world to you. You never know. You never. It's noon? Ah, oh. Whew. We'd have to do this about midnight so Nate could drink too. See? See, Tammy's already got a bottle of wine staring at her. She's ready. I don't know, my back kind of hurts. I'm going to have to have a couple shots of rum or something. Because, because my back hurts, you know. Because my back hurts. I don't know how Misty and Jeffrey stand up and do this. I see why when she does her really long ones, she does them sitting down because this is hard on the back, even sitting here. Because I probably got poor posture. Mom said, sit up straight, sit up straight. And I apparently did not listen well enough. So, all right. Did, I was going to ask y'all about something. If y'all watched the Rescue Squad last night. And I can't remember what it was. Darn it. Oh, well. Did y'all see Jeffrey on Friday night? Did you see Jeffrey's live sale? Okay. I was out of pocket working on stuff for this. And so I didn't see it. So Saturday night, I already had all my stuff picked out. And uh, then I watched Jeffrey's sale and I'm like, oh, I have something that Jeffrey had. I hope people don't think I, I was trying to copy Jeffrey because I promise I wasn't. I promise I wasn't. I got this when I was on my sale out west and uh, I got to reach for it. And uh, so, yeah, I didn't copy Jeffrey. I already picked out and mine is a different color. So, it's this bamboo wicker style ceramic gradiated sizes, <laughs> tri-level, however you want to say it, planter, okay? I, I put the little succulents in it so you get an idea of what it would look like with plants. Now, Jeffrey's had been a blue color. This one is a very soft like a baby yellow, like a baby yellow. Let me take these little guys out of here so I can show you. Now this is going to be a throw down. This is going to be a throw down. Let me find my, my throw down number for this guy. This is it. Not that, this one. Okay, let's get this straight. Now Jeffrey, identified this as being um, like 1930s era planter. And I can see that. 
because the, the color and the glazing on this just just speaks to that era. Somebody had said to them it looked like um, like pylons in a dock, you know, with the rope on it, because it does have a very detailed rope. But this this texture on here, this woven pattern looks just like bamboo to me, rattan, bamboo furniture, wicker furniture, you know. It is made in Japan, which is also an indication it's not Nippon, it's not occupied. So it's made in Japan, which I know later pieces said too, but Jeffrey said 30, so I'm going with what Jeffrey said. So we'll start, we'll start this planter out at $12. So if anybody is interested in this, this three-part planter that Jeffrey has identified as 1930s, just give me a bit of, of $12 and we will go from there. And if no one else bids on it, then you get it for 12. And if no one bids on it, then I get a planner to enjoy for a while, which never bothers me because who was it? I think it was Michelle today that said she only buys things that she enjoys. She says she has a hard time buying. Thank you, Tammy. Tammy has put in a bid for 12. Sandra, um, Tammy has already bid 12. So the number to beat is 12. Michelle says she finds it hard to buy things that she doesn't personally enjoy. And I totally understand that because everything that I buy is something that I could happily keep. I just, I like to shop. And I have to force myself to get rid of things because I want to go shop some more. That it feeds my habit. So I see Tammy is back with 15 on the vintage 1930s wicker look planter. If it's, it's got a nice, um, the color is evenly distributed. There's no hot spots that are darker or lighter. If you see any on screen, it is merely shading because it is a textured detail. It's not a solid piece. It is really textured like you see wicker furniture. I see Sandra at 16. And there is your Japan mark. Tammy is out. So that leaves us with Sandra. Sandra, you got a good deal. If you don't believe me, then go back and watch Jeffrey's sale from Friday night. You're going to be very, very pleased with your purchase when you see it. So let me, where's my pen? It walked away on me. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we've got Sandra. And we've got Sandra for $16. There we go. Okay. All righty. Uh, it's time for the the Jeffrey egg. Everybody needs a Jeffrey egg. Jeffrey said he was having trouble finding them. That um, they're, I guess, they've become so popular, people are just scooping them up everywhere. But now, this one's a little different. It is an Ardco egg, which is Japan, but it says on it, read it exactly. It says Ardco Fine Quality Dallas, made in Japan. So this is a Texas egg, y'all. <laughs> this is a Texas Jeffrey egg. It's got the three roses and the rosebud, yellow and two pinks. 
The overall color is a pale pink with all the gold de uh, gilded detailing. It has the usual three little legs with all the gold gilding on it. Make sure I hold it to you the right way. There you go. Which, I uh, know you're going to believe me. Yes, they are. We're, we're not calling them a cracked egg vase anymore, Tammy. These are now Jeffrey eggs, and that's just all there is to it. The world is going to have to, to um, understand what it is. What it is. It has um, details um, where they have hand painted details on it, edging on the flowers to kind of give them more of a 3D effect on it. And let me see, did I see anything on this? Thought I saw maybe a mark right there. Do you see that? It's like a little mark on it. But lovely, lovely. Jeffrey A. $12, number 55. No home is complete. No collection finished without a lovely Jeffrey egg. Everybody's got to say it. Everybody's got to say it. You need a Jeffrey egg. And you can have one for $12. Number 55. The going rate for a Jeffrey egg these days. I remember when they used to be eight. They ain't eight no more. You can't buy them and sell them for eight no more. And nobody sells them for eight anymore. Seems like, it's kind of like eggs at the grocery store. There's like a standard going egg rate. Believe it or not, there's a Jeffrey egg rate. The Jeffrey egg rate is $12. Don't ask me. It just is. It just is. I think this is, this is the third one that I've had and sold. I sold one on eBay because I sell on eBay as well. And then I sold one at my first live sale with Beth and Debbie, Beth Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties and Debbie R Vagabond Travels. Hmm. Let's see, what do we have here? Hmm, all right. I have, oh, she's a lovely, she was in the pictures. She is a very, very lovely thing. And she is my last throwdown because the other throwdowns went so well. <laughs> I'm sorry, I crack myself up sometimes. What are you gonna do? You gotta laugh, life is funny, life is funny and it's, Nothing to be taken too seriously. Well, there's things to be taken seriously. There are things to be taken seriously, y'all. But live sales aren't one of them because they're live sales. Anything can happen. So this is my last throwdown. And then we have a couple of items. Um piece of jewelry and another linen after that if anybody is interested so i hope if anybody came for this item there they waited it out and they're still here because here she is there she is isn't she glorious just take in that color that sweet face, that little bird she's holding. She's got a polka dot kerchief on. She is like gold around the, her edge, you know, would be a ribbon detailing, right? She is 60s fabulousness. Oh my gosh. She is a bank. <laughs> She originally came from Dee's Flowers, wherever that was at. 
but she is a Japan piece. She is a bank. She has her stopper. I know there are people who collect these, these, these paper mache type, and it's not like, you know, it's not like a, a party. You're going to pinata paper mache. This is, this is, this is good and solid. Very, very collectible. Look at her face. I haven't found another one like her. I looked because I didn't know what to charge for her. So I looked for for other ones and I could I could find something similar, but not not her. Not her. The flowers are a, a relief detail there. They, they stand out. She got the little bird, but we'll just get right to it. We're going to start her at $16 because let's face it, face it. She's worth it. She's a special piece. And uh, it, it, if you like them, if you love them, you, 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 you just know it. And there are a special group of people who collect these, not, not that the people who collect them are special. Well, they're special, but, you know, they're not special. So, it's not what I'm saying. <laughs> There's just, there is a, um, a group of people who, who like this type of quiche. So, quiche, quiche, whatever. She's not a quiche. You don't eat her. She's a quiche. She's cute. She's funny. She's colorful. She's vibrant. So... There's people who collect them, and they're not here today. I don't know where they are. If you know them, would you please call them and tell them to get a hold of me? <gasps> oh, my God. This is just so funny. You know I love you guys. Um, she is eight and a half inches tall. And I have the... Ruler here, if you would like to see the comparison of how tall she is. See, she's almost nine inches tall. Wait, I think I fudged a little bit like a kid. There you go. She gorgeous. She just gorgeous. And she just gonna live with me a little longer. I'll offer her again some other day. I'm not offended. I'm not worried about it. It doesn't bother me. Um, two more things. I have a tablecloth. I have a, a handmade vintage tablecloth. And it comes with matching napkins. I think this is dogwood. I think this is dogwood. Does that look like dogwood to you guys? It is hand embroidered with piecework on it. The flowers are the applique piecework. That's okay, Beth. Don't worry about it, baby. All of this is hand stitched. The trim is hand stitched. As you can see on the inside. It's bigger than a square. It is 44 inches square. I mean, when I say it's bigger than a square, I mean it's bigger than just the little table square. You have the main pattern in the center with four of these little, like, um, they almost look like little miniature doilies. And then they are enclosed in a hand stitch square, and you have the same pattern in each corner of the tablecloth.
it's a fine cotton, uh, a soft, soft cotton. I can't remember what it's called. It may, may have been lawn, a lawn cotton. It's just that very delicate, delicate piece. Now, it's old. It has, um, let me show you how it's put together in the back. Do you see how they added all these squares? Where they hand stitched them together to keep increasing the size. Anyway, what I was going to show you, if I can find it again, uh, it has this mark on the back, which does show through a little bit to the front here. And then as I look at it like this, searching for what I wanted to show you, right here, there, and there, there are two slightly discolored circles. I don't know if you can see them because this is the first time I saw them. I had to hold them up like this again and put light behind them. Because I didn't see them when I was ironing them. And the great thing about this beautiful tablecloth is that it comes with matching napkins. And it has, let me count them. It's two, four, six comes with six matching napkins and each of the napkins has the same flower detail and has the same hand stitching all the way around it and these are about a 12 inch square napkin more of a luncheon napkin than a dinner napkin you think they might be a daffodil they're white do daffodils come in white I know, so much work, so much work. But, you know, once upon a time, young girls usually didn't have jobs outside of the home. School was their job, and learning to keep a nice home was their job. And part of what they did, they had learned to sew. And so they made things for their hope chests for their future homes. And they made things to give to each other as, as shower gifts. So that's why, that's why you see so much of these, these decorative linens and pillowcases and doilies and, and all that because that's what girls did. You know, young girls, they, they, especially teenage girls, they very seldom work. You might see them, them young boys working for the summer at the gas station or at the uh, soda shops, things like that. But you didn't see a bunch of girls working unless they worked in a family business. So now this is this is really nice. So I'm going to ask $26 for it for the tablecloth and the what did I say? Six or seven napkins? I forget. Because a lot of work went into this. And uh it's just, it's just worth it, you guys. Now, if it's something that you are interested in, number 73 will get you this tablecloth and these napkins. Boy, I am not a pres high pressure salesman, am I? I should be like, you need this. You can't live without this. Your life will not be complete until you have this. No, that's not me. That's not what I do. I'm like, look, if any of you guys are here and you're interested in this, this is what I'd like to get for it. This is what I think it's worth. You know, maybe you guys aren't interested in it. Maybe the person who wants this isn't here today. And I'll put it on the sale another day and they'll be here. Or I'll put it on eBay and I'll find them there. I must be terrible at this. I should be pressuring you people more. <laughs> but I'm not. So, there. I'm not going to pressure you. And that wasn't meant to pressure you. That was, that was more a 
caricature of me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This I'm so funny. All right, we're down to our last piece. And it's a good thing because everybody done left. <laughs> Everybody done left. Uh oh, I didn't give this a a price or anything. Oh, oh my gosh, what am I gonna charge for this? What am I gonna? What? It's a five strand necklace. Now, ooh, it's cold, so it is either. I don't know if it's chipped or if it's glass because I am not a jewel expert. I just know what I like. Isn't that pretty? Oh, okay, so standard, was that lobster class? Yeah, standard lobster class, but it's got an expansion so you can change the length. Now, I don't think I measured the drop on this. Let me see, what is the drop? The way I had it, the for the smallest strand, the drop is about, if I turn the ruler the right way, that would help so tremendously. The smallest strand is about an eight inch drop. Now, I don't know if I can hook this with my nails, but I'll give it a shot for you guys. Cause you know I love you. Ow! Oh. Only problem with having nails. So this woman once had these nails that, gosh, they had to be so long, and, and she could do all her jewelry. I don't get that. There we go. Okay, look out. Okay, I have. I got a big neck. <laughs> That's what I have. I have it way down at the end of the extender. So, depending upon how girthsome your neck is, it's going to be whether or not it's a tighter like that or hangs down farther. Um, this is well beyond the top of, of old girls. So, you can see the way they go like this. It feels so nice and cool against the neck. Let's see if I can get them off. I may have to wear them forever until my son saves me. <laughs> but very lovely. And I don't know, but I don't know. I didn't put a price on them. So I don't know how much they are or what number they are. We'll have to we have to make up a number. Let's see. I'm going to use one of Tammy's numbers. Okay. Let's see. All right. They are, it's going to be, uh, no, I still have, I only had one cat. Didn't I have, no, I had two cats. All right, I sold the Tonala cat and I didn't sell the Norcrest cat. So, there you go. It's not hooked, it's just hanging there so you can see it. Which is not very flattering the way I have it, I'll tell you what. Ah, oh, forget about it. To heck with it. <laughs> to heck with it. It's green, it's gorgeous. It makes noise. It is $12 and it's number 14. And it will be sent to you in a lovely little jewelry bag and in a box so that you'll have something nice to keep it in. If you decide that you would like to have it. Very nice. Very chic. It's very chic. If I don't sell this, I'm going to have to wear this. I forgot I had this in storage. I could have worn this. Dang it. Boy, it'd look good for St. Patrick's Day, though, won't it? All this nice and green. 
goes good with my nails. So, yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's see. That, that wraps it up, except for if there's anything that you guys might have saw in the preview that you are interested in. Um, Joanne, I have the Norcrest cat figure still available. The vintage Japan cat. And he was $8 and he's number 99 if you're interested in him. There's his Norcrest symbol. He's just a laying there. The tail. He's got one black ear and one brown ear. So, if you're interested in that one, I have that one. Other than that, I sold the other one. Um, I have, I have everything else left. <laughs> so, if there was anything, um, like I said, that that y'all saw that y'all were interested in, I still have the egg. I have the elephant, the girl, the alabaster trinket dish. Yeah, I sold that one. I sold that one. Let's see who got that one. Uh, Janice got that one. Janice got the Tonala cat. So, yeah. Well, I am not, we've been on here a long time, and so I am not going to go back through all these other things. Like I said, unless there was just something in particular. The owl planter, this little guy, yes? Yes, Christine? Okay, let me write you down for the owl planter. And let me pull his number and put it in the drawing for you. Ooh, where does that go? Ask yourself these questions. Where did that go? Oh, that went over there. Okay. And I have that number right here. Sandra, you want the Norcrest cat? You'll take that one? Okay, Sandra. Okay, let me... This is what I was talking about when I earlier I said, oh no, I did not do that. Shame on me. It's I usually separate my cards so that I can say, oh yeah, I've got this one and I've got that one. Let me pull this off so I can throw your sticker in the bag and and I didn't do it. Turn over this which should be easier to find. Which makes it harder to get this stuff. Not that one. The next one. This one. Yeah, there we go. I got it. Oh, yeah, you missed that one. Yeah, I don't have it. Uh, I do not have. I mean, I've got the elephant, the vintage elephant with the shamrocks on him. Got him. Or I've got the big George Good Rabbit. I got that one. Let's see, I think that's, I mean, there's other things, but Let's see that goes over here, this goes over here. I can't think of anything unless, let's see, I've got the egg, which was a surprise to me. And I've got the apron and I've got the doilies or the, um, Pillowcase. So. Huh. The elephant price. The elephant is, hold on, let me find him. I don't like to stick a little number on him because I will lose him. 
is up here. The vintage elephant is is twelve dollars, and I promise I I am I am underpricing what I find online. I promise I would not charge you the same prices online. So, so. um, the prices for what, Kathy? Beth, you want the elephant? Is that what you're you're saying? With the lag, I'm a little confused, but that happens to me. So, okay, yes, Beth wants the elephant. Okay. Now, where is that? Did I put that darn elephant again? I, you know what, I've, I've got to have another kid. If I have another kid, maybe I can get that one to help me. Of course, I didn't even ask the other one. I, I could have asked the other one, but I didn't ask the other one. He's tired. He works. The egg and the rabbit. Oh, okay, hold on just a second. Let me pull this, this number out for Miss Beth. The egg and the rabbit. Well, you'd think I'd do both these at the same time, wouldn't you? 55, keep going. Too far? Keep going. I'm looking for number 66. Uh, <laughs> I'm so smart. I got a better way. Uh, I'll write it down. Okay. The George Good Rabbit is $12. And the Jeffrey egg is also $12. It's the pink Ardco. So. My do not disturb settings in there. Because that ain't going to cut it. She just answered it. And y'all could have listened to me talk to my daughter. She's so amazing. She's very entertaining. Alrighty then. Okay. Let's see. Trying to think. If that is... Oh, Joanne, you want the rabbit? Alrighty, ma'am. The George Good rabbit goes to Miss Joanne. Uh, and that's number 74. I'm going to put your number down in this drawing. Okay, so let's see. We have Music Box Swan. We have Capa de Monte. Does anybody want linens? Linux dish. That's okay, Kathy. That's all right. It's not a problem. I'm not worried about it, honey. Not a bit. You guys have all been more than generous, and and I appreciate your your time and your purchases. So, um, if we are all done, you think? I mean, I'm not gonna make you look go through all the rest of this stuff. I'll, it'll be on another sale. And you can see it then, and if you're interested in it then, you know, then you can get it then. Or I'll put it on eBay, and you can get it then. Or somebody will watch the sale later on, the, the, the redo. The green teapot, it was $12. Joanne, did you still want it? Did you change your mind? The number on it was... Number 81, you had already said that you wanted it. Was I mistaken? It's possible. That happens to me. So. 
yes, I'm very silent. I'm reading. <laughs> I don't want to miss what she says because if I was mistaken about um, her wanting it, yes, you still want it. Okay. All right, then. Okay. You know, everybody's been complaining the last couple of days about how laggy YouTube has been. And it really was today. It really was. I appreciate you saying that, Amy. Appreciate you saying that. Let me let me draw for the number for the uh, the giveaway, the ceramic sheet pen, and we'll see who's lucky in the Irish bag. Number I can't get it unwrapped. Number 99. Uh, Sandra, it's the Norcrest cat that you decided at the last minute that you would like to have. So, I will include the ceramic pin in your items when I send them. Okay, so, if, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Kathy. There's nothing else you can do but but be calm. There's there's nothing else you can do. You guys are sweethearts. And it's fun to do it anyway. So if you have not purchased something from me before, which most people have not, just a few have, remember to send me a conversation. Uh, a conversation. A conversation. Send me a conversation. Send me an email with your YouTube name, your real name, your address, including your zip code, and your PayPal email address so that I will be able to send you an invoice and let you know how much everything's going to be with your shipping included. Make sure you send that email to the email you see on the screen, avintageconversation at gmail.com. you got to put that A in the email address or this other person gets it and they get all ticky about it. So, that being said, I appreciate you all being here. I will, like I said, start invoices probably tomorrow and the next day. And you pay me when you get a chance. If you have any problems, just email me. I'm so easy going, guys. My husband doesn't think so, but I really am. But thank you, guys. I appreciate you spending so much time with me. Um, I know we all got to go make dinner now. And uh, love to you all. Have a good evening. Bye. Oh, you know what? This is hard to do with fingernails. <laughs> I should have brought my little pushy pen. We may be here forever. <laughs>